Good evening. I don't know if we're on. Can you hear me? Thank you for coming out on a Friday evening of Columbus Day weekend. We appreciate it. All our, our friends and our, our families, both um, my, my producing partner, Kim Snyder. I'm Maria Cuomo Cole. And um, this is our director also, Kim Snyder, who made a beautiful film. Um, both our moms are here, so we just want to acknowledge them first. We always try to call our moms, right, every day. That's right. That's right. We do mom check. Um, but we want to we want to thank everybody. We really um, we real, really want to say that we are especially appreciative of my brother, my governor brother Andrew Cuomo, taking time this evening to be with us, and um, especially proud of his bold advocacy and gun violence prevention legislation. So thank you, Andrew. <laughs> And Senator Brad Heilman is here as well, and Assembly Member Joanne Simon. Thank you so much for being here. A special thanks to our theatrical distributor, Richard Abramowitz, is here, who's helped us tremendously, and Abramarama. Thank you. Our production partner, Transform Films, Nick Stewart, is here. Thank you, Nick. Our tremendous production help and our broadcast partner, ITVS PBS. And we're especially honored to have all three families who are featured in our film here with us this evening. And uh, we thank you for your trust and for opening up your lives and hearts to us. And we're proud to call you our friends. I just want to, again, Thank the governor and um, my producing partner, Maria, without whom none of this would be possible. And I really want to also take a moment to just really uh, thank from the bottom of my heart, Mark and Jackie Barden, Nicole, David and Francine, your trust has meant the world. And I also want to acknowledge all of our other friends who are here from Newtown who might be with us and all of the ripple effects uh, that um, permeate off the, from there. Thank you. And now it's a, a pleasure to introduce Mark Barden, um, who spends every day, like all our families, working to prevent this heartache from happening to other communities and other families. Thank you, Mark. I'll be really brief, because I know we're running late. Um, Thank you all for being here. Uh, this is a very special and important evening. Um, as you may know, and as you will find out here, um, my wife Jackie and I lost our youngest of our three children, our sweet little Daniel, in the horrific tragedy of the Sandy Hook School shooting. And after that time, uh, our eyes were opened up to the unbelievable situation that's happening in this country with with gun violence, with 32,000 people dying every single year. And nothing was being done about it. We went to Washington. We lobbied over half of the Senate to try to get Washington to do something, and they did nothing. But somebody who did do something, somebody who had the courage to stand up and do something, and as we say in New York, do the right thing, was Governor Andrew Cuomo who enacted in 2013, enacted the SAFE Act, which is the strongest piece of sensible gun reform legislation in the country, and is making New York a model for the rest of the country to follow. <laughs> New Yorkers are safer now. Countless lives have been saved, not only by the SAFE Act, but, but by the uh, continuous advocacy from Governor Cuomo, uh, safety initiatives being implemented, Im implemented throughout the state. And as Jackie and I were driving down here, we were looking at, we were thinking about this, this state, and we were looking at New York and its vastness. And then I was just kind of in my mind picturing going up the Hudson Valley and the beauty there, all the way up to Plattsburgh, the Canadian border, way out to Buffalo, this huge state. And he's here right now with us to bear witness with you 
and, and, and be impacted by this very special and powerful piece of work uh, that's brought to us by, by Kim and Maria. So um, it's my honor to continue to work with Governor and to help make our communities safer. And I am so honored and privileged to introduce Governor Andrew Cuomo to you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, first to uh, my little sister, Maria, <laughs> who we are all so proud of now. Uh, we lost my father, not now, we were always proud of you, I didn't mean it now. <laughs> you have to be so careful when you're talking about family, one word, you're not invited to Thanksgiving dinner. The, uh, I've always been proud of her. A couple of years there were a little rough, but I was still proud of you. Bad things happen, but I was still proud of you, and I still loved you. Uh, the, uh, she's been doing uh, tremendous work, and this is one example of it. Uh, and she is very much her father's daughter. We lost my father just over a year ago, five children. And uh, my father loved Maria best of all. <laughs> he tried to keep it a secret, but he couldn't. Uh, and he was right, too. So congratulations, Maria. Congratulations, Kim. What you have done here is a beautiful thing. And let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> to Mark and to Jackie Barden, to the Wheelers, to Nicole Hockley, I have such respect for you. Uh, I can't imagine the pain of losing a child. I just, I cannot believe that what, what that would feel like. And I'm sure it's a pain that's with you every day. And your strength to take that pain and turn it into a positive rather than allow it to be a negative is really a testament to your character. Because it could have made you bitter. It could have made you angry. It could have turned you inside. And instead, you did the exact opposite. You said, how do I take this and how do I help other people? And I'm sure that's part of your catharsis to deal with it, but it is the right way to deal with it and the healthy way to deal with it. Uh, and it really is a statement about who you are. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and to Senator Hoylman and uh, Assemblyperson uh, Joanne Simon who are here, who passed the SAFE Act, thank you very much. Pleasure to be with you. And just a couple of words because um, this film is so powerful and the film is going to say uh, better uh, than any message I could convey to you. Uh, the gun issue is still one that truly confounds me. And the insanity of it, frankly, confounds me. A few days ago, I was in the Hoboken train station uh, where the train hit the platform and a young woman, 36 years old, Fabiola de Croon, dies tragically, young child at home. Uh, Haiti, we just lost 800 people to a hurricane that came and devoured the country. I was in a hospital ward for children with cancer a few weeks ago, many of whom were going to die. Uh, and you say to yourself, why? Why? Just random acts, hurricanes, freak train crashes, diseases. Uh, and then you have 30,000 people every year who die from gun violence. The difference is the 30,000 people who die from gun violence is preventable. That is preventable. And it is insane not to prevent those 30,000 people from losing their lives. And that is what this is all about. Now, the gun issue is not a legal issue. It's not an issue of principle. There's no legitimate principle debate on the gun issue. It's not a question of religion. It's not a question of belief. It's just politics run amok. It just says that this country is at a place where you can't have a rational discussion and exercise common sense. That's what it really says to all of us. No one's trying to outlaw guns. This is not about the Second Amendment. 
And this is about principles that everybody would agree with. That's what the SAFE Act is. Criminals shouldn't have guns. That's right. Mentally ill people shouldn't have guns. That's right. Well, then we need a background system to check before somebody buys a gun to make sure they're not criminals or mentally ill. That's right. And then we have to close something called the gun show loophole. What's the gun show loophole? Gun show loophole means if you can't buy a gun legitimately because you can't go through the background check, you shouldn't be allowed to show up in a parking lot at a flea market and buy a gun. That's the gun show loophole. One other point, we shouldn't sell assault weapons. Why? Because Because assault weapons, the risk does not justify the benefit of allowing people to own them. Assault weapon can shoot 30, 40 rounds. Only chance a police officer has to intervene in, a, in an active shooter situation is when the shooter changes magazines. That three or four seconds, that's the only, se the only opportunity for that police officer to rush that active shooter. Assault weapon, you don't need to change magazines. You can wipe out dozens with one assault weapon. We knew that in 1934. We outlawed machine guns. Why? Because we said, rationally, common sense, they were too dangerous. But for some reason, that eludes us today. Well, assault weapons, we need them for hunting, sporting. There is no hunting with an assault weapon. Nobody goes out to hunt a deer with an assault weapon. You don't. The laws in this state, the hunting laws in this state, you can't have more than six shells in a gun. That law has been in effect for 50 years. 50 years, no more than six shells in a gun when you're hunting. Nobody complained. There was no infringement on Second Amendment. That's not what it was about. So this really is our loss of rationality and common sense. We passed the SAFE Act literally in the wake of Sandy Hook and Newtown. Why? Because it was a moment in time where people got it. And you want to talk about the silent majority? The silent majority saw Sandy Hook and said something had to be done. And in the state of New York, our legislature luckily seized that moment of opportunity and we passed the SAFE Act. And it is the best law in the United States of America. And the other thing it says, the other thing it says, which, which was a point that Mark was raising, when you pass a law in New York, uh, New York is a complicated, big, diverse state. And if you can do it in New York, you could do it anywhere. We could even make that a song. <laughs> you pass a law, you pass a law in New York, that is a law that you can pass across the country. We have Democratic Assembly, and we have a Republican-controlled Senate. That law was passed by Democrats and Republicans. It required both houses. So if you can pass that on a bipartisan basis in New York, you can do it nationwide. And that's the other power of the SAFE Act. Not just that it made New York better, but for all those people out there who said, well, we can never get this done, we'll never convince the Congress, you'll never get the Republicans. Yes, you can. I know because we have. And my last point is, you know, when you work on an issue like this, day in and day out. I'm sure it gets frustrating. I'm sure the insanity of it gets frustrating. Uh, and I'm sure to see the politics overwhelm any intelligent discussion gets frustrating. Uh, but you have to remember that change takes time, uh, but change comes. When you think back in this nation, it's amazing where we were and where we've come from. 1967, 16 states said blacks and whites can't marry. 1967, 1978, you could fire a woman because she was pregnant. 1978, 
1986, the Supreme Court said sex between gays was illegal. 1986. So, the, it's frustrating, but the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And look how far we have come since then. And the people will get this, and they'll get it more and more. The more dangerous this country gets, frankly, the more they will understand this. The more terrorist attacks, the more Chelsea bombings, uh, the more lone wolves, people are getting that we need to take sensible action to protect ourselves because the world is getting more and more dangerous. Our trick is to depoliticize the issue and humanize the issue. And that's what you do so effectively. And that's what this film does so effectively. It, it drips away the illusion of politics and says it's not about politics, it's about people. And it's about saving lives. And it's about saving the lives of innocent people. And at the end of the day, this country is made up of good people who care about one another, who respect life, who live their lives with common sense. And when they hear this message, and the more we get out this message, the more powerful it will be. And we will make this change as a nation. The only question is when, and from our point of view, as soon as possible, because literally every day counts in number of lives. Congratulations to you for the work you do and the strength that you have. My little sister, Kim, my mother, God bless you. God bless you for what you do. <laughs> Pleasure.